Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of Jane's Pizza. Uh, today, 7226 transmission, uh, just doing some service on it, check the valve body, check the conductor plate that's in there, and uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So I did a few years ago a video about uh, 722621 transmission, this was for my 190 V12. Internally these are the same. Um, the front is different because the ball pattern is different, but you can just change them out. A lot of these transmissions are the same internally, but they have a different ball pattern of on the back is different because this one is a free ball design. Sorry, free ball design. Some of a four ball design. So the bigger V12s and that sort of stuff have a four ball design. Later compressor models E55s had a four ball design. This one is a 624. Uh, this transmission is coming from a normal aspirated E55 uh, from a W210 model. So they used a 624 or a 623 uh, and a 636, I think. It's like the same kind of transmission they also use on a 320 CDI. So this is like the transmission that has the most clutch plates in it. Um, and steel plates are the same as the V12, so it's the strongest V8 transmission you can use. So it's the same internally as the compressor one. So they say they could handle 1100 Nm with the stock clutches in it, but yeah, then you're really stressing it, I think. So if you're new to the channel, engine under here with this transmission is for my SM24 V8 turbo project. Uh, if you're new to the channel, have a look in the right corner for you. You can see my logo. For you on the right side, you can see my logo and see all the other videos about this project. And don't forget to subscribe. Also have a look at my website, jamespeedshop.com. So this transmission is still full of oil. The first thing I'm going to do is going to drain it and have a look how the oil looks like. Because I have this transmission, I think, for a few years already. I think uh, four years maybe I bought this one. Um, so also the torque converter is full of oil. And I can see then, uh, yeah, from the look of it, the oil you can make make up a lot of about the how the transmission is inside. Because this transmission, I bought it on paper with 170,000 kilometers. You really never know. I mean, yeah, it's always a gamble. But the transmission does not look pretty dirty or that sort of stuff. So yeah, what do you need to believe? Of course, that's that's always a gamble. But yeah, you can make things up about how stuff looks. So let's have a go. I just put the torque converter back in. I drained the oil. So on the earlier versions you have a different torque converter. It's a little bit fatter and bigger and it holds more oil and most of them like the V8 versions have also a drain plug in them. I think they all have it. I think they changed around 2000 but if some people know please put uh, the right year below because there were some changes in these transmissions but yeah these old ones have a drain plug. I think this one is from 1998 this transmission and you could just drain it and there's a massive load of oil in it of course. So I think it's really handy to do it because you can do it underneath a car. You if you have an older car you can see through these two holes the back one you will see that bolt and just with an allen key you can remove it drain it and uh, yeah that will save you uh, save you a lot of stuff and later on when you start it the pump will just pump the oil back in so this is the gear that is connected to the oil pump and this is just for your for your gear section so and inside is the same thing so I will put this back in. I took a little sample, put it apart, and then we go to the next part. So not a drain plug underneath here. Normally you're under the car, of course. A little bit stuck. There we go. Also going to take a little bit of oil from here. Doesn't look too bad. 
So, turn the transmission a little bit up. Uh, got all the bolts out of it, so now we can drop it. Most of the oil is out. So, you cannot really see it. I will show you later on, but the pan is out. I'll put some racks underneath. You see the valve body over here in the, in the filter. So why I'm doing this and not rolling it on the side, because if I roll it on the side, the oil will go back into the transmission. We'll take it off. Want to put it back, there's still old oil in there, so I don't want that. And I'll put just some racks underneath so it can just drip a little bit. I'll look if I can get the oil filter out. I think there were two clips or something that's holding it on this side. And on the other side, have a look. Oh, there it is. There's the old oil filter. It's holding by this clip over here. Can you see it? Oh, my hand is in front of it. There's a clip. Clip over here. And then just with the o-ring. Put this in the in the oil pan so I'm going to let it drip and then later on I'll put the transmission back on the side and then we can have a look at the felt body on its side inside it looks all pretty clean not that bad the oil is pretty clear so I don't think this is the first oil but when I look to the filter there is 1998 or something on it, so that should tell me that's the first filter. So maybe they flushed it, but never changed the filter. Can be. Um, pan, I've removed all the oil. You can see there is some grey stuff in it that looks like uh, filter or, or a crust material. So it's not that bad. It's just pretty normal that you have a little bit of that in there. I put a magnet through it. Could not really find anything. There's also not a magnet in here, so I'm not sure if the earliest one have a magnet in here or that is on the on the drain plug. But cannot really find it, so I will put a magnet in there any uh, after I close it again. I don't have it; I have to order it. But the filter is from. It looks like 81997. If this is the year, not sure. On here, it's it's an original Mercedes filter. I think it's 1990, end of 1996 or something. So, or it's just an old filter that was on stock, but I cannot really. Yeah, how long do they have these filters on stock? I'm not sure. So, all of overall, up to this point, not that bad. So, next thing, show you a little bit how this thing works. Put the camera a little bit up. So, the earlier versions have this connection over here. It's always starting to leak, so we're also going to change it. Normally there is a, uh, a cable in it with a spring that pushes on this connection. So if it's then in park, so this, it's locked. And the cable is then pulled, uh, pulled towards you. The cable is going to the, I think it's going to the steering locking mechanism also. So it will be cleared if the key is in the car and it's turned to position one or something. <coughs> and then this parking lock is removed. You can see it, it's moving up there. I hope you can see it. You can see it over here. I also had it on my V12 transmission, but if you don't push this, this will not go anywhere. So, <coughs> if I now push this, have a look if I can show you that a little bit. If I push this now, I can put it out. So, this is then. Park. This is neutral, re ref uh, reverse, and drive, and the rest is electronic. Electronic in the in the shifter. So if you put it back in park, it's locked. So there is a small rubber piece that is always starting to leak. I had it before. My complete garage was on the oil. You see that brownish thing? That can go leaking, and then your complete transmission is emptying itself in your garage or under driving so if you ever open this change out that rubber so what I'm thinking of doing 
is remove this piece. Have a look, put the, the light on there. On the last car I did not do it because I had the cable and yeah, if somebody wants to use it. But I think I'm going to remove this piece, this. So you, it will not be locked in park anymore, but only locked um, in in drive if you're driving it that's because of a solenoid it will not be locked anymore in park because i think it's just uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not going to use it but it can because i cannot connect it to anything because it's a w124 it doesn't have that so the next thing what is also a thing is the connector on the side that's over there there are two rubber seals in it that always start to leak because we're going to change that and then we also have to remove the valve body so the first thing we're going to do is get the valve body off and then we're going to have a look at this piece over here it needs to be removed and before you take the valve body off you have to remove the connector so let's go <coughs> so connector can be removed from the yellow clip and put it towards you and look at this all wet that's what you don't want to see. The most problems you get with this transmission, with shifting issues and all that such shit, it's all because of this. Yeah, it gets weird electronic stuff. There are also people that have then even the wires wet, and then there is even oil in your TCU. So it, all the oil is going through the cable into your TCU, you get all kind of issues. So just change this. I think this is like 12 euros 50 or something. With all the o-rings, there's an o-ring over here, and there are two o-rings in this thing. So, have to have a look. There is, I think, a bolt in there, a very small bolt. Yeah, in the middle, you can see there is a very small bolt. I think you have to talk it to. 500 meters or something. It's very, it's, it's not much. So I'm going to have a look at what size it is. This is seven mil, seven millimeters. And then you can just pull it out. Look, there it is. Ball stays in. There's no ring over here, the other O-ring is still here, you can see it. And you can see the connectors all there. So this normally should be sealed and the inside should be dry. So if you're ever under your car, just get this plug out on the side and just have a look if it's dry. If it's dry, you don't have to do anything. If it's already under there, very long time, just change this. It's very easy to do. Nothing weird. You can just change it. I have, I have a new one. I will show you that later when I put it back in there. So, so now we can go back to the felt body on the top to how to remove it. So to remove the felt body, we have to remove all the black bolts. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So let's have a go. So I think I will can get it out now. So, this is it. Look, 
I think the first one that I'm noticing is that if you watch my old video, I think these caps were not on the other one. So that's already something that they changed. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, and for the rest, it, it's. I think it's not that bad. It looks. It's a little bit black, but no big stuff you don't want to see. For the rest, there is a little bit of oil in there. I'm going to remove that, of course. <coughs> so, next thing is. I think I'm first going to do the park. Or the PLIL. That's the parking lock mechanism. Um, to change the seal and then I'm going to look what I'm I think I'm going to remove this just that doesn't really make any sense to have it so I'm first going to change the seal in the back I think that's the best to start with so P L I L I think this is called parking lock so this rubber is always leaking so it's over here, it's mounted like this. So we have, there is a small shaft in here that we need to hammer out this side and it will come out on the other side. We have to pull it out, then remove it, uh, and then, yeah, then we can get it off. And I will put this back in there, but I don't think I'm going to put this back. I have to have a look into that, but first we're going to hammer it out and then uh, we'll have a look. Watch out for the spring. There's a spring. That's it's going pretty easy. I thought it was a little bit harder to do this. <coughs> okay. This is already it. See, stick it down here. Okay. This is it. Oh, it's already off. That's the part, including the spring. This is the seal. This one looks pretty good. Yeah, looks pretty good.
We can put the new one back in. So if nothing is in there, this will be just hanging in there. So I don't think that would be a problem. So I'm doing this because I'm going to run an off-gear ECU or TCU for this transmission and it's in a car where I don't have a parking lock mechanism. So if you put it back in the original car and this is in it, then you should use it, of course. Way then. So, small bolt. Doesn't need a lot, just hand tight and that's it. So now it's just hanging in here. This is parking lock. So I have a change, the only thing I need to do is get this pin back in. So it doesn't really make any difference to have it in or not. Only if you use a parking lock with your ignition key then it's a different thing. Uh, I switched it a few times and then uh, yeah, it still works like it should be. It doesn't make any difference because if I put it all, all the way in here it will also be up all the time. So it doesn't really make a difference. So that looks now that it's a little bit loose, but that's because the felt body is not in there. Normally there's a spring holding all these knocks into place. So we just put it in park and it's locked. Have a look. It's now locked. If I now turn it, I can turn the transmission, but the rear shaft is not doing anything. If I get it out and put it in drive, it's in gear again. Put it back in power. It's locked. So that all works. <coughs> so now I'm only have to put this back into place. Have a look. What's is there a small? There's a small O-ring on here. So we need to be very careful because I don't have a new O-ring, of course. You just step it in. Very easy. all the way that's it completely in just like it was so that is that so now I'm going to put this aside or at the end and then we have going to have a look at the valve body so, felt body. So, um, it's in a transmission like this. So, this side is over here. There's a hole over here that's for this side, and that is the oil filter on. So, there's a few things you can see on this. Is you got a solenoids over here, you got here two solenoids here. There are three, I think, underneath them. Or more, we, have, we can see it. Or four and two something like that this is the shifter so this depends if you're in park 
uh, neutral reverse and drive that's connected to here on top and this is the spring that I'm talking about that will drop in this side then you have a level sensor in here two speed sensors um, yeah there's more in, in it but we're first going to remove it so I have to remove the plastic caps I think they are just clicked on in some way I have to have a look yeah look four solenoids two on this side so we can remove these solenoids now or we can do it later I think I have to remove them because otherwise I cannot get the um, get the conductor plate off original Mercedes you can see it so we can, can test them later just put 12 volts on these connectors so we put them in the place where we got them from Okay. This is it. Yes, that's it. Okay. So what a very good thing is to look for is for burnt spots or bad spots on the print. So where the solenoids are connected but there are no burn marks in this one say this number two speed sensors so I have a new one I bought a new one so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this if I'm going to put it back or put a new one in because if this one looks good why should you change it but yeah I didn't drove with this valve body or with this conductor plate so I think I'm just going to clean this one up put it in a sealed bag and just have it for spare so if, if something happens in the future then I can use it to to check and I can measure all the connectors through have a look if it's working I think I'm going to do that because I think this one is just an I don't think this one has ever changed but I, I, you never know but have to find if there is some kind of date on it normally there is some kind of date, I have to clean it and then we have a look so I have a new one for this, the last time I did not change it because that car had only done 60,000 kilometers from that transmission <coughs> and this one is uh, has done 170 so yeah you never know, it looks all fine but I can check if there is a new number on this one well, yeah, it does not look bad, but for now I'll put it away. So now I'm going to open the <coughs> the valve body. 
So you have to open it in a certain way because otherwise there are some balls in here in the oil channels, steel ones and plastic ones, and they will drop out. Now is that's not really bad if you know where they go. I have a drawing for this. So I have a look into the drawing how I have to open it. I think it's this way with the big side down and then you can open it and there's just a steel plate in here. There's no gasket. The steel plate is the gasket. That's the way it should also be opened. So come to check and then we're going to open this. So come to open it. All the black bolts need to be uh, get out of them, all the black ones. Um, needs to be placed like this, big side down, small side up, and then the balls will stay on the underside. So, let's have a go. So all the bolts are out, so now we could lift this up, that is, I forgot one over here. I think it's always looking very cool this. Nice. So this is the, yeah, it's a, some kind of gasket, but also steel plate with all kinds of holes in it. I'm first going to get a towel on to get some oil off. So now we can lift this off. There's a dowel pin over here. Nice. So there is some oil in here, so I have to have a look what I'm going to do with it, because the balls are also in here. So I have to pour it out in some way and don't lose the balls, so come to look into that. So clean this. So I have this. This is from a manual and shows you where everything is. So turn it like this. So there are like four steel balls in here, here, there, over there. There's a check valve over here. There are three plastic balls. Uh, here, over there and here, and there are another four balls. Have a look. Here are two balls. And the one is over there. And there are two filters. There's a filter over here, and a filter over here. And on the other side uh, is also a filter, two, filter, two filters. And I have a kit, I will show you later. There are those filters. The check valve I don't have, it's not really a problem. Because I think this is not that bad. I, if I see there is not really that much dirt in it. So what I'm going to do, I take some pictures of it uh, and have a look if the balls are all in the same place as on the drawing, because this is the same should be the same of course. Then I will pull the filters out. Uh, I take the all the balls out and I will put it upside down on uh, some paper. Also with the other one and leave them leak out for uh, a few hours or overnight. And tomorrow I will take out all the side caps. There are all the springs and things. Everything is in there. I'll show you that later. And also going to clean it and check if there are no broken springs in it. 
if everything is good, uh, I put it back together. At first I would clean it with a brake cleaner, but I'm not going to do it because uh, also I have to put everything back in there and it's, it's not really dirty or something. It, it's really not really that dirty. I would expect it to be much worse. So uh, I think this car had seen some oil changes, but I think it's weird is that the filter is maybe it's just an old filter, but I would expect the oil to be much dirtier. So that's what I'm going to do. Take the balls out and then put them upside down. And then when I put them back together, I will show you uh, behind the side caps and then go from there. So <coughs> some hours later, uh, let them leak out both sides so you can see much more in there now got all the Balls out as you can see eight steel ones four plastic ones two screens Those screens that I will show you when I put it back together. They are under two solenoids Two filter just two filters. They were also in this plate the check valve was over here I got it out uh, just to check if it works. The check valve I don't have, the filters I have, and the balls will all go back in. What I also did is I drilled the hole bigger from the third to fourth flare. Um, why I did this is because I'm going to run an off gear um, standalone TCU. So that's made by offgear.dk. We'll put a link below the video. There is some there is an option in that transmission that if you drill this hole bigger you will have less slip because there is an issue in this transmission from shifting from third to fourth gear that uh, Mercedes solved with doing with the software some adjustments. So normally if you then if I'm correctly then uh, they uh, there is slip from third to fourth gear and in a factory ECU uh, it will go off throttle so you will shift not full throttle it will take the load of the transmission and then shift from third to fourth so in a standalone like I'm going to run you don't have that option and you just want to shift full throttle um, so there is an option to make that l less worse so I did the same thing with my V12 in the past and that works very good you can adjust that that third to fourth flare option in the off gear TCU and it makes the slip much less so that's why I did this I will put a picture below uh, on my website so you can find this one also a link to the website of offgear.dk if you're interested in that so what I did not do with my last transmission because it was very low mileage is check all the springs so these are all, all the shifter uh, springs and all the yeah, I call it pistons that are in there and I just want to make sure that I don't have any broken springs because there are some parts in here that you can have broken springs so this is from the manual from ATSG I'll put a link below the video or on my website that you can download it because it's very easy to have and it will show you yeah, just everything to know also with different ages in these transmission what they change so I'm going to take everything then out just like on the picture so I'm now now here I'm going to check if all the springs are correct and if they're not broken or deformed or anything else um, and there are some I think it's this one this spring is changed in the past for a different uh, design it can break so I just want to know for sure because Otherwise, when it does not work, when I use it for the first time, I have to take everything uh, uh, under the car away and then check again. So I just want to make sure that my starting point is good, because I never dove with this transmission. So, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so this is how, normally there is just a plate on the back, the steel plate, they are also over here and over here and there are two over here you have to be very careful with these balls because they are only talked to four newton meters according to spec so um, it's very hard to get a torque wrench that's uh, accurate at this, this these low torque values so I just do it by feeling by hand to put them back on torque because in the past I tried to put them on torque and it's just yeah you can feel that it's not 
correct. So it can be that I not have a high quality torque wrench for that low settings. I think that's maybe the case, but I just want you to know. So these small bolts are four newton meters. The other bolts, these ones, are on eight newton meters. They are the same torque value if you put the valve body back in the transmission. So I'm going to make a picture of all these things when I take them out and I'm not going to film that because it's just a yeah it's a long stretch of filming and checking for me so I show you the first one the rest is on pictures on my website how it looks so see you in a minute when I'm done <coughs> so I checked everything according to drawings everything is uh, in good condition also the springs are all in good condition, nothing is broken, uh, looks all good. So now it's time to put uh, all the steel balls back, the rubber balls or the plastic balls, new filters and the check valve has to go back in. So that's what I'm going to do. So I have four new filters. New filters. Pretty small, just put them in. These ones uh, will go in when the smaller side is back on the top side with the gasket and steel, stainless steel gasket in between. They are underneath two solenoids. I will do this, those one later. So I'm going to put everything in the right position and yeah, let's go. So now everything is in. I do a last check. So it's all nice and clean. All looks good. So the parade is fully cleaned. So I already showed you that I drilled this hole to four millimeters. That's when you have an off gear unit. It's for the three to four flare function. Now this plate can go on. There is a dowel pin in here. Now the top one can go on. That's it. Now all the bolts can go in. So all these bolts need to be torqued down to 8 newton meters, so that's what I'm going to do.
So that's it. So about these two filter screens, they need to be underneath the pressure control solenoids. Those channels are those. These two are the ones they need to go in. That's also the only place that they will fit in. So you just drop them in and afterwards the solenoid will go over it. So there are little points above it and on the top. So there will be a distance in between the bottom channel and top. So these solenoids are for that position. So we can use this to put the screen down. That's it. So those are in. Now I'm going to get the new um, control module that needs to go on top of it. And then uh, going to install the solenoids and everything back. So I think this bit is a little bit interesting. So this is the original Mercedes one that came out of it. It's a very big possibility that this is the original one that came from the factory. There are some issues you could have. You could have also have a look always if you don't have damaged speed sensors because that can happen. Sometimes you see that it's damaged. This one is okay. Uh, also these points where the solenoids go on can have some uh, burn marks are yeah not that they are completely clean you will see it if they are not good you can see it so on the bottom side there's not really something to see not really there's just a switch over here I think this is a switch and there is temperature sensor on the side uh, level sensor speed sensors connectors and these are the solenoids <clears throat> so what is interesting about this part is I think this part is I'm not sure anymore. I think it's 450 euros or something from Mercedes. This is from Fabi Bilstein. I think this one cost me in a kit complete. I think 190 euros. That's including uh, the gasket and the connector and that sort of stuff. The filter, everything is in there, except for that. PLIL uh, connector that I changed that's over that's on the top that's this this one that was not included uh, I will put a part number below because you know what is interesting you can see here here they send it out the original Mercedes number also over there because Bilstein is also making these for Mercedes there is one number in here that's PA66 GF Three zero, the same number is over here. So the only thing that's not on here anymore are the Mercedes part numbers. I did not found this out by myself because I found this years ago somewhere on the web and I checked it, and yeah, it's just the same. So um, they also look completely the same. Everything is the same. There's no. Uh, uh, casting difference in it or how you call it or uh, it's a mold of course it's all the same so this one does not look bad but I'm I have this one I will put this one in and keep this one for the spare and I'm going to measure the connections through and I'm going to have a look if I get these speed sensors if I get a, can get a signal or something from it um, and then I just keep this as a spare so I'm going to mount this and I'm going to put this back in the box for a spare so, place a conductor plate on it. I think I called it before a different name, but it's a conductor plate. There's one pin. Sorry, hope you can see it a little bit. There's one pin here. It needs to go in here. And there's this pin that needs to go in the back. And you click it in place, and then the solenoids will keep it down for the rest. It. So, got one solenoid, battery 12 volts, plus and a minus, and you can just put it on the connector. I hope you can hear it. So, this is a good one. 
take this one. You can hear it. Much less noisy than the other one. So I'm going to check these four also. Yes. The grey rounds just make more noise. All good. So let's put them in. So let's go. So I don't have these O-rings. Didn't thought about it, but check them. They all look good. The best is to change them. Yeah, I don't have them at the moment. So let's put them back in. Of course, there are also aftermarket solenoids or blue tops or red. Uh, yeah, I think it's blue tops that they call them. These are just the original ones. <coughs> My opinion is that, of course, it will never shift like a, a, how you say it, Formula One car. But with an off gear unit, it's really fast. My experience is that it's really fast. And uh, I think if you're running an original TCU transmission controller, then okay, I understand that you may be using different internals, but the thing of the the slower shifting of this D7 is because of the software and not because of the hardware. That's my opinion, because I drove it in off gear and it's, it's pretty fast, like a half a second. So I did not time it, but it feels very fast. Fast enough for me. Okay, this can go on top. This one needs to be torqued down also to 8 Nm, it's also an M6 bolt. They will hold down the <coughs> solenoids. No damages. All done. So, felt body with new conductor plate, all checked, new filters are in it, can now go back into the transmission. So, um, also M6 bolts also need to be torqued down to 8 Nm, meters, just like everything else. So everything is 8 Nm meters except for the side plates, they are 4 Nm meters. If you've got a very good torque wrench you can use it. I have a very cheap one, I know this one is on the lower end, you cannot trust it. From like, uh, like 80 nm I'm using it for, I tested it, it's just reliable, but not lower than that. So I put them just with my hands on my feeling to the right uh, correct value, so that's it. I'm going to put the conductor plate back in, everything is 
cleans. <coughs> so we have to have a look for the shifting piece, the plastic piece over here. This one needs to go in on the right position and the spring needs to go in the right position. So let's have a look. This is it. So let's put them on the same torque value, it's also 8 Newton meters. So that's it. Now the filter can go on. New filter. A little bit of oil on the O-ring. So there's a small clip over here that will drop in. That's it. Filter in place. Connector. New one. New O rings. New O rings. A little bit of oil in them, not too much. Going to torque this one. I think out of my head it was 5 Nm or something, so it's just hand tight. Don't overdo it. Uh, it's a very small bolt. I think it's M4. Maybe it's less than that. If I have the torque value, I will put it below the video, but I just do it by hand. So, let's have a go. This one should go in only on one, in one way. Yes. It is completely in. That's it. So, last oil pan. I cleaned it. But, no magnet in here. 
Um, I think I had the same thing with the old transmission that I used, not an old one, the 1996 transmission 4312. But it also did not have a magnet. So I didn't thought about it, so I did not order one. So I'm not going to close it up now fully, but I'm going to put a new gasket on that was also in the kit. Put the gasket on and then close it up hand tight. And then later on, I will put the magnet in. It's like a flat magnet. I have a picture of it. I will put it below the video on my website. You can see a picture of it. I have, if I have the part number, I will uh, also give you that. Also the part number of the kit. And then I will close this up. So this is it for this video. So, thanks for watching. Video about 7226. If there are any questions, leave some comments below the video. Send me an email on my website. Um, don't forget to have a look on my page for the rest of the videos of this project. In the right corner of my logo, you can click on it, see all the other videos. Don't forget to subscribe, put a thumbs up, have a look at my website, jnspeedshop.com. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and see you for the next time. Bye bye.